Um, we have cases all the time. We've had a share of defendants who have taken the stand. Uh, but then every once in a while, and it doesn't happen that often, you know, the last time I think something like this happened, um, there was a case out in Arizona involving a woman. Um, what was that name? Right? Thank you. Jody Arias, who took the stand and wouldn't get off, right? She wouldn't get off the witness stand. Well, that's what's happening right now in Los Angeles, California, with Robert Durst. All right, let me give you the backstory for those of you just joining us for the very first time. Uh, Robert Durst is being accused of the murder of Susan Berman. Um, that's Robert Durst all the way on the left back in the day, okay? This is back in the late 70s, early 80s. All the way to, her, to the right is his wife, Kathy. She disappeared in 1982. Susan, the one in the middle, is his best friend. Kathy disappeared. Robert Durst has never been charged with that. Susan Berman was found dead in her home. Robert Durst is now facing charges for that. But during the course of the trial for the murder of Susan Berman, the prosecutor is also attempting to implicate Robert Durst for the death of his wife, Kathy, whose body's never been found. There she is. And, and today, uh, on the witness stand, Robert Durst facing cross-examination. And this is going to be a very methodical, detailed, deep, deep, deep into the weeds of everything type of cross-examination. But remember, it's not just about Susan Berman. It's about Kathy Durst. And it's also about what happened down in Galveston, Texas, when he killed a man. Uh, he claimed self-defense. The jury agreed with him, okay? So there's, there's a lot of things to get to in this trial. But right now, we're focused on Kathy Durst and the prosecutor um, questioning uh, 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 Durst about the nature of the relationship, what was going on. And remember, this is a prosecutor who knows his case inside out. This is a prosecutor who I believe is, is living to win this case right now, okay? This is his his single focus in what's happening in his life, as it, as it should be for a great attorney. But it's almost to another extreme here. But he knows the facts inside and out. He knows every statement that Robert Durst has ever made. And if Robert Durst says something different, uh, he is ready to cross him on all of it. So now we're going back to the late 70s and the 80s, and we're talking about Robert Durst and his wife, Kathy. All right, I want to talk about Kathy for a moment. Do you miss her? Yeah. Tell me about her. When I think about Kathy, I miss Kathy. What was she like? She was very lively, and up until the last year of her, of her marriage, she was very happy. Would you agree she was a very bright young woman? Yes. Beautiful? Yes. Would you agree that she was close to and devoted to her family? close to Mary Hughes, the other two sisters, and her brother, she was not so close to. She was very close to her mom, though, as well, right? Sure. And would you agree that she was really excited about becoming a doctor? Yes. Would you further agree that, given the humble beginnings that she had come from, she was really accomplishing things in her life. Yeah. Would you also agree that the Kathy Durst you know would never have simply taken off this close to graduating medical school? I would agree with that. Would you also agree that Kathy Durst never would have abandoned her family and friends to never talk to them again? Yeah. 
<laughs> and if I asked you on a scale of one to a hundred, with one being, you know what? Yeah, I can absolutely see Kathy abandoning her family in medical school, never to be heard from again. And a hundred being, that is an impossibility. What number would you give it? I would give it a hundred. Now, many of you are commenting on this, and, and some may know, some may not know. Like he's, he's looking, you know, to his to his left as the questions are being asked, and, and he's making the answers. Uh, he's not reading answers. What he's reading is the question, because he's got some hearing issues. And we saw that during direct, he would hear some questions and not others. And when he turns there, what he's doing is reading the question that's being transcribed instantaneously. So there he is talking about um, his wife, Kathy, who wouldn't just disappear, right? She wouldn't. And, and that was basically the story since 1982. She just disappeared. She, maybe she took off. Um, now... This isn't the first time that this prosecutor has spoken to Bob Durst. And then it, there's, there's almost like a, a relationship that these two have had. Because you go back to 2015, when Robert Durst is, 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 is arrested down there, John Lewin interviews him down there in Louisiana. So that came up during the cross-examination, and then things got a little more heated. Take a listen. This clip you're playing, when is it? Our interview, March 15, 2015. People 299. 291. 291? Yes, sorry. Okay. By the time Kathy disappeared, you didn't feel the same way about her that you did before, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, we were going to ask it right in her cold when she first met us. We were in love, right? Period. No two ways about it. We were in love. That passed in about two years. Right. And then we had the thing with the abortion. Right. And that was the end of it. I don't feel that way at all. I'm surprised I said that. Well, you can't blame Mr. Jarecki for this one, correct? Correct. So, you're agreeing you said it, correct? I agree I said it. Did I give you a script? in advance or tell you, here's what I would like you to say during our interview for your plea bargain? No. So you would agree that everything you just said there came completely from your own mind, from your own mouth, from your own memory, correct? Correct. And you would also agree, Mr. Durst, that you have to admit to that. You don't have a choice because it's in front of you, it's being played to you, it's not from Jarecki. You're trapped. Like a little rat in a cage. Uh, I'll withdraw the last part. Sustain. Told you it's getting personal. Rat in a cage. All right. It's interesting. So Bob Durst kind of crack a smile there. Uh, a couple things I want to talk about. This whole dynamic, this back and forth between prosecutor and accused murderer. Let's bring in our think tank. Joining us tonight in Atlanta, Georgia, criminal defense attorney Eklund Mercy in Los Angeles, California, former federal prosecutor Nima Romani, and in Phoenix, Arizona, the attorney who represented, what was her name again? Jody Arias. He's also the author of the book series Trapped with Ms. Arias. Kirk Nurmi is back with us. All right. Um, Kirk, let me start with you because I, I already mentioned your legendary trial and your client up there on the stand, the client who you don't like, I know. Let's let everyone know. Uh, that's why you were trapped with her. Couldn't get out of the case. Um, what's the advantage, disadvantage, when a defendant is up there day after day after day after day, and it seems like the prosecutor is taking it personally? Well, you're, you know, it, you're right, day after day. And what's really abundantly clear in this case is he is, as you said earlier, living to gain a conviction. And I think the longer he's up there, the more likely he's to display to the jury that that's exactly what he's trying to do. And is that personal, is it based on his personal vendetta as opposed to the evidence before him? We didn't see it in these clips today, but earlier during the testimony, we saw him 
yelling at Durst. We saw him play acting as his wife. We saw him mocking him. We saw him accusing him of perjury, uh, 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 something that could have caused a mistrial. So we saw all this personal vendetta and this anger. There were times he was yelling at him. And he's yelling at a 78-year-old man who's suffering from bladder cancer. The jury could get kind of turned off by that behavior and think it's more about a vendetta than the evidence before them. Nima Romani, former federal prosecutor, your thoughts about the passion of John Lewin, the prosecutor in the case. Vinny, I mean, this is happening just down the street for me. And, you know, I agree with Kirk, but I was actually worried that Lewin would be much more aggressive, would try to bully Bob Durst. And I think he's really scaled it back and put on a clinic of cross-examination yesterday and today. And don't get me wrong, Bob Durst is a professional criminal defendant. He's beaten one murder trial. And really, of the three cases, Susan Berman's arguably the weakest. So I had serious concerns after he testified for almost a week. But I thought Lewin has done an outstanding job, particularly yesterday, where he got Durst to admit over and over again that not only is he a liar, but had he killed Susan Berman, he would continue to lie about it to this very jury. So I think it's a very effective cross-examination, and the state has gained considerable ground over the past two days. Okay, Eklund, uh, is he a rat in a cage right now, Bob Durst? No, I think it's like Batman and Joker. I think they kind of need each other. They kind of feed off each other. You can see the history, and I know that the jury can also sh um, see that as well. I'm looking at it from a defense point of view. Um, if the jury can see that, like, the prosecutor has literally put all his career eggs in this basket and that it's not about the victim it's about you know the prosecutor's like ego that may hurt them i mean that may hurt the prosecution so i don't know um would i beat up on a hundred year old man who looks so frail who doesn't look like what they look like um during the time of the incident no. So I think that um, it's a really fine line. I, if I was him, I wouldn't have taken the case. I, if I was the prosecution, which I would never be, but I wouldn't take the case because I think he's too he's too tied to it. He's too tied to the um, to the outcome. Well, it's a double edged sword, right? He could he could be too emotionally involved in, in, in the case and that comes through. But on the other hand, he knows this case better than anyone. And, and that's the chess match that I see between him and Bob Durst. Like, who knows more about the case, Bob Durst or John Lewin? All right.